Oceans apart, but on the street we'll meet. Goodness knows how all this works, but I love it. Goodness knows how all this works, but I love it. Somehow then I found it there in your pocket. A very special feeling's coming over me. Kaleidoscopes are flying by so busily. Goodness knows how all this works, but I love it. Goodness knows how all this works, but I love it. Somehow then I found it there in your pockets. Okay, number 27. I want to see if in this one I can take this ugly thing from like that to like the screen. And that is fillered, primered, sanded, and ready to walk away from. I don't think I can. I think it's going to be a bit of a longer one than that, but I've got five or six hours in front of me, plenty of time, plenty of patience ish. And I'm going to get stuck in, so wish me luck. Welcome back to the Boys Garage. Now you can see from this, um, just quickly you saw from the intro, um, today I'm trialling the shotgun mic on top of the camera. Now I don't know at this state, at this stage, um, what the sound is going to come out like. I've had a few um, mess ups in the past with it, so do excuse if it's a little bit odd, but it's new, it's different. The shotgun mic is, is uh, a stereo microphone, so it's only recording from a 45 degree angle in front of it so it should be eliminating all the stuff from behind also with the fur cover over it that you saw the idea is it doesn't pick up peripheral sounds there's no wind noise in here but any peripheral sounds or echo it should eliminate that too i've done a little couple of tests with it in the office and it's not too bad but you can't really tell until it's in here so i don't know so bear with us today very first video with the shotgun mic we keep upgrading this equipment as we go right anyway getting stuck in Um, all prepared, but I want to tell you just very quickly, if I can, about block sanding. I've mentioned it quite a lot, and a few of you said, what does block sanding mean? It appears that we still have many novice people watching this, so I want to make this project, this whole project, about trying to pass on some of the things you can use yourself. So block sanding, when you're making, doing any body work at all, block sanding is exactly what it says. It doesn't mean sanding a lot of things in one go. Um, block sanding simply means sanding with a block. A block, sandpaper, wrap it round, sand it down. Now the reason you do it that way is if you've got imperfections that are poking up and you want to rub just that bit only, the block is flat and hard and it will just take that imperfection off only and it will rub it flat. If you use your hand, um, you just have a piece of sandpaper in your hand, it will go over the imperfection like a tyre goes over a stone and it will absorb it and effectively as it absorbs that it won't rub it down on its own, it will rub the area around it you may not want. You want to take those imperfections out and flatten them off, so you use a block to do that. But with a vehicle, a wooden block is no good. Uh, it's great for your doors in your house or your skirting boards because they're equally as dead flat. But that's no good, because vehicles ain't dead flat. I don't think there's a vehicle ever, ever, anywhere that has got a dead flat surface. Even some of these old 60s cars that look like they've got a dead flat bonnet, they haven't. There's a curve to it, and there's always a curve on a vehicle. And on a motorcycle tank, they're nothing but curves. That whole thing is curves and, and swoops and bends, and there's no way you could sand any of the imperfections down with a wooden block. Completely wrong. Use foam. This is what you sand vehicles with. Now, you can buy it if you're rich. You can go out there and buy sanding foam blocks. They're perfectly available from the parts companies. But this stuff, you can make it yourself. This is high density closed cell foam. And you may not have a block that big. You know the stuff when you were a kid and you went swimming, you were learning to swim as a little kid, you, the, the floats that you used to hold onto and kick your legs, those things, that's pretty much what this stuff is. And you can get it 
it's hard to buy in big blocks like that. However, if you go and buy a camping mat, if you've got an old camping mat in the loft, cut it up into a half a dozen layers of A4 size, then get some spray glue, stick it all together in a stack, and get a carving knife like you did just then with a ruler, and carve it into blocks, and you've got sanding blocks. That's so easy, isn't it? And free, practically. And that stuff will last forever. Now, the beauty of it is, it is hard, it is firm, it will give a nice firm surface if you don't push down with it too hard. There's the secret to using sanding blocks on a vehicle. And that is, put the sanding paper around it, and then when you're rubbing, don't, don't push down too hard. If you push down too hard, then the paper will absorb the imperfection and it will rub either side of it. If you push, just sand gently with nice fresh sandpaper, it will take that imperfection out. And when you come to curves, the forgiving nature of the corners of this stuff will fit with the curves. It won't tear lumps out of your paper. It will last longer, which is all good, and that will make a better finish. So when you're sanding vehicles with a block, always use high density foam and make it yourself out of camping mat. Ain't not, is it? I'm gonna get stuck in. Now the idea of this has just been to key it up first of all, but also to halfway get some of the shape going on, um, just around this back end. That's got to be kind of like a spine area down the middle, so that's got to be right. Uh, it's nice and smooth now, a couple of little imperfections like that where it's just a bit thin, so I'm just going to fill her over that. That'll get, like I said, it's going to get a thin skin, about sort of three or four mil of filler over the whole lot, just to get that final shape. Filed that out because the resin had kind of reduced the hole a bit, and the box wouldn't go anywhere near it, so scrape that out, just with the blade side on, and got it out. That's now the right size, so the box drops back in. Keeping it live as we go. Just put a little bit of a sand around there, there's not much point in putting any more. That's proper, proper thick. Don't need to smooth that out, I'll just put a little fill around that. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is irrelevant. You wanna see what I do. Let's get on with it. It didn't matter at all. Got no chance to make it fun of me today. They locked us up and threw the key. Right, that's that suitably iced. Um, I'm gonna leave that now for about an hour so it goes proper tough. It's already touchable, but if you start sanding it at this point, you're gonna clog up the paper with clumps of it and then you'll put lines in it and it'll just make a mess. It's gotta go proper solid and bone dry. And with a hot load, I put loads and loads of hardware in there and it's 70 degrees in here, so that's gonna go off nice and tough. And when they're done, I can come back and start putting a little bit of shape into it. I haven't put a lot on, I've just put a real thin skin on so far and I'm rationing myself for a reason. As I said at the beginning, I don't want much filler in this at all. So it's very easy to just go troweling it all over and then with a rasp and a file then carve it all perfectly. But you end up with 50% of what you've bought all over the bench and dust in the bin and you're still only up with any more on the job. So I'm gonna try and do it as frugally as possible purely because as a guide to myself, I don't want much in there. I want it to be tough, it is flexible, it's P38, Easy sand, flexible plastic padding. Uh, Americans, you guys call it Bondo. It's pretty much the same stuff for everywhere in the world. It's just body filler. And once it's dried right out, I only want to have a thin amount on there. So it doesn't crack, it doesn't peel, it doesn't split, and in the future it'll be nice and tough and resilient, and that's the name of the game. So for this one, for now, it's gonna let that proper dry, 
and go and have a brew for about half an hour while that just goes off. See in a bit. Got no chance of making fun of me today. They locked us up and threw the key away that need a little bit of filler in, just little pinholes. It's just a repetitive, rather boring process. Um, you can feel the stuff, but when you start getting the filler in your hand, you can't remember where that gap was. So it's just on and on and on this. It's a long old job. 
going to be a good six hour one this. This is just a big bit there. Just little creases and dents that have appeared that just need refilling. You can sand past them but then you're too low and it's cockeyed so it's, it's constant. It's all good fun. kind of shaping, the sculpting of it is, is now done really. Um, because I set out to do as little as filler as, as little filler as possible, um, I don't want to rub any more off. I've put half of that tin, that's a 600ml tin which is just over, what's that, just over a pint and I've used half, roughly half of it. So half a pint of filler. Um, don't know why I didn't measure it in millilitres and not ounces, I don't know, but half of that tin and that's not bad at all, uh, that's not big tin, so, and, and half of what I've put on is in the back, <laughs> so, you know, hoovered up out of the way. So what I'm going to do now with this, because, you know, you get to this stage where it's kind of all like that, you can't really see the wood for the trees now, it's, it's so many different shades and colours and bits coming through and then a new bit comes through. I think what, the thing to do now is put a guide coat over it, because I can't really see the shape now. The, the colours, the visual image of all the different shades of filler as I'm rubbing through it, they're disguising the high spots and low spots which you normally observe through shadow. So, um, I think. Uh, so really you just need to put a single coat of primer over that now. One coat of primer which uniforms everything so it's all completely flat. You don't see any of these different shades or colours and then you can spot where it's low and where it's high. Then you can rub those bits down, add filler to the, you know, blah, blah, blah. So there we are. This is time for a guide coat. Just a quick wipe over with a wet cloth. I'm not going to use acetone on this. On everything else I've done, I use acetone to wipe it over. But acetone will make the filler go soft and sticky. It kind of dissolves it. It's no, acetone's like thinners. It's pretty nasty. So just water, just a, a, a wet rag to wipe this over, get the dust off, and then a coat or a primer. Oh, shot. Sure. sand. Um, all the shaping is correct, that's where I want it to be now. There's little, as you can see from the fact where it's shiny, there's wobbly bits like there. That's not right. So a little bit more block sanding in that. You'd never see that unless it's one colour. So a little bit more work on there and this corner. These come out real well. These corners, can't really see them. But both the front corners are really nice, perfectly radius and nice and round. 
got those exit holes right. Just worked on the exit holes for the drains today. That one's correct. It's kind of you know, just oblong and but rounded and chamfered right out. That's quite nice. That's the front exit for the drain. The entrance for the drains are not finished yet. I haven't done anything with them. They've got to be filed and dressed out. But the left hand side, the rear drain, that's the exit for that. A few of you said that's going to look silly, but there we are. That's all it is. It's literally just a tiny little hole. That's all it will be. So anything that gets spilt in there will just drain out there. And when this is all painted with two pack clear lacquer and indeed up through there too, then it won't get anywhere and do anything to it. Now there are issues all over it. I can see loads and loads of work to do loads. And when it's shiny, you can kind of see it more than if this goes matte. Cause when this is dry, it's matte. And I put virtually a whole tin of that gray on there. Oh, there's some more issues there all over the place. That's too flat, that's too pointed. So that's got to be blocked down that line. But I still want a curve. I don't want a sharp line, I want it a curve. So that's not right, that's got to be done yet. Uh, that edge on this front, where are we? The whole kind of purpose of this is to get this going on, to kind of mirror image that in there and have the bars down in between it. That's the desired effect and when the clocks are down in there that will look less empty It'll, they'll there'll be something there and I may or may not use that metal box not sure a couple of other ideas yet um, but there we are six hours again again but happy dead happy with that result lots of work right so there we are that's probably the dirtiest work you'll ever do um, dust everywhere, better get clean up now, feels much better. Um, obviously with all these jobs, protect yourself, dust masks at all times. If you're gonna be painting, always use a proper painting mask, um, which has got canisters, you know, proper filters and so on. But just dust uh, and stuff for sanding, always protect yourself because that dust is pretty nasty. Uh, right, so there we are, can't do much more. Like I said, that needs absolutely loads of work yet. That is by no means anywhere near finished. I've got to, just fill in all the little pinholes. I've got to finish finessing the shape, get it exactly right. It may need a little bit more filler here and there, a bit less there and here, and gradually it will be perfect. And then it will be just a coat of five wheel silver, the same as the front. Then I can move on to the belly pan. The belly pan, I've got something rather ingenious and amazing for using to make a belly pan with. You'll absolutely love it. I'm trying to source the item I need to do it with at the moment. It's causing a few problems. I can't find what I need, but whole, Hold fast, I will get it. Um, next video up will be the results of the helmet giveaway competition. So the prize draw, uh, this is, uh, what is this, Saturday, you're watching this. Prize draw will be done, pulled, and posted tomorrow, Sunday. So one lucky winner out there will get a 500 pound crash helmet, which is well fantastic. So there we are, can't do much more today. Six hours, came in at 10 this morning. What's the time now, let's have a look. 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, 20 to 5 so six and a half hours just over six and a half hours on that and I'm quite proud of the result really like that that's more than I expected it to be that's often not the case you know it usually goes the other way so really really chuffed thank you ever so much for watching and all your support with this I'll leave you with water friends take it easy right safe and I'll see you for the next one Closer, closer than yesterday